All right, what's your name, sir? Uh, Michael. Michael, where are you from? I'm from Monroeville. From Monroeville. Well, tell me, Michael from Monroeville, why are you occupying Pittsburgh here and now? Well, because I wanted to enact change, I suppose. Uh, it, it's For me, the Occupy movement has been a transforming experience for me. It's really, uh, uh, before I actually got into Occupy at all, uh, I was not involved with any type of protest, activism, or anything like that. And so... Um, that meant louder. louder. <laughs> all right. Let's re-ask the question then. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, what, uh, uh, why do you Occupy? Well, be- before I got into Occupy, I mean, I wasn't doing anything. I was interested in a lot of political things, but I didn't really see uh, myself as uh, being able to actually uh, em- employ any type of ideas that I had. Mm-hmm. Occupy has actually given me the uh, the motive and also the uh, ability to really uh, get my voice heard, make sure that you know uh, I could actually be active in the, in the political change and, and whatnot. So I, I think it was really important for me to actually get involved with this. And, why do you think it? Why do you think it was harder for you to get connected and involved before? Like there have been other, you know, read the paper, you watch the news, you you know, other movements, other campaigns. You could say like, yeah. well, like what is it that made up was was different about Occupy? Well, I mean, before that was a Tea Party, and I really agree with their motivations behind it. Mm. I mean, yeah. well, well, before that was the Democratic and Republican parties too, but. Oh, only, which I didn't necessarily agree with either. I mean, mm-hmm. I think the whole idea of uh, you know. Uh, polarity is just uh, against it. That's one of the things I love about Occupy is the fact that it's it, it's solidarity. It's coming together and listening. It's not like you're being told what to do. You're actually being listened to. What can we do? What do you want us to do? And if if you have a good idea, it, it floats to the top. You know, the, and and I think that's fantastic. The idea of this higher this this horizontal leaderless movement is fantastic because it gives everybody their voice and gives everybody a chance to speak up. So instead of um. In, instead of the politics, you started talking about the process of the movement. I mean, I mean, so so what is it that uh, I mean, what is it that you like about how Occupy does its business, makes its decisions, whatever? Well, yeah, I mean, the general assemblies that we have. I mean, it's it, it's a difficult process. I mean, because I mean, it's something that it, it, nobody's used to. Nobody's used to being able to like uh, having to like spend a lot of time in meetings, but. As a result of those meetings, you have a lot of discussion and you have a complete understanding of not only what you're going to do, but the reasons why you're going to do them. And I think that's tremendously important. And each person has the ability to actually give their concerns and have those concerns be addressed. And that's something that you don't see in politics. If some, if you disagree with somebody, well, you're no longer part of the party. You're no longer part of the process. You're kicked out. You know, it, just because you disagree with somebody. Mm-hmm. Even if your reasons are legitimate, it doesn't matter because you're not founding the party line, which I think is ridiculous. That's one of the reasons why I never got involved with politics in the first okay. place. Now, a lot of people, especially in the comments on my blog, they like to ask me, okay, so, you know, protesting, whatever, greed, 99%, you know, why do you have to occupy somebody's private, you know, why, why are you at this square downtown? Like, why, why are... People in sleeping bags. Why do you have to, you know, go through all that mess? Well, two reasons. I, I, I think the message itself, just the, like the, the image itself, the juxtaposition of the camp itself, right next, which is like this tent city, right next to, you know, the BNY Mellon Building and right next to the U.S. Steel Building. It's a wonderful message. I think it sends a. I mean, you're right in the heart of downtown, where a lot of politics takes place, and yet you're you're occupying tents, and it sort of like calls to attention, like the the. The, the excess and, and the without. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, I mean, it acts as a springboard for a lot of different things. I mean, you actually have a lot of different people coming together, and it's like a, a centralized meeting spot for a lot of these people who wouldn't have other, any place else to go to. Where else are you going to go around around Pittsburgh, around the United States, where you're going to find people who, who agree with these issues, where you can have a conversation with, a dialogue with, mm-hmm. and actually be able to get something done? Mm-hmm. Now, you, you just said there was actually a lot of diversity among you know, uh, thinking, thoughts, issues. And then you said, where else are you going to find a lot of people who agree? Well, and then a place like this. So, so what kind of things do you find yourself in ag- What kind of things do you find yourself in agreement with? Like, what is the... Like, you've been around for a while now. Yeah. What What is yeah. the Occupy sensibility as far as politics? Well, I think it all comes down to unfairness. I mean, when you have... I mean, there was a recent poll that just, or a recent study that just came out that since 2009, when the, the economy just kind of, like, spiraled down, that... Uh, we've ha- we have recovered so much, but all these profits are all going to corporations. Like mm-hmm. they've actually taken eighty eight percent of the the growth, whereas workers have only got one percent. I mean, talk about making a new meaning to the the number one percent. I mean, that's how much we're getting. <laughs> <laughs> whereas the one percent is getting all the rest. I mean, 
and I, I think it's uh, I, I think that speaks for itself okay so it's sort of uh, it, it, is it a liberal philosophy then or, or if it's not no. what you know right away what distinguishes it from a liberal philosophy well I mean well I mean we have libertarians who are among us you know I, mean, I don't think that's the liberal uh, you know it all depends I, I guess I mean liberal itself has lost its meaning I mean it's just one of those words that people throw around or sorry pro- progressive I, I should have said even yeah. progressive I mean once you add labels to things you're starting to like uh, put other people's ideas as to what that means into it so mm-hmm. I mean I'm not sure if I agree with that I'm not even mm-hmm. sure what progressive means anymore okay you know I mean I, when I think of that I think of soup <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. that's progresso Excuse me, I'm sorry. But, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I mean, as far as, I mean, we're, we're trying to enact change, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I, I think that we're trying to make the place, a, we're trying to make the world a better place. And so, I mean, yeah, there's well, that. Well, when you look back, this is, we're now on day 71 or 72. I 73, forget. I think. 73 already. Yep. Time flies. Yeah. Um, what um, what uh, can you look back on and say, you know, I think this moved the ball forward as far as making change. I think that this, uh, you well, know. Do you mean, it, well, whether it's little moments you know, among people or big moments at actions and, you know, being in the paper or holding well, coffee or whatever whatever else? Well, I, you know, it's a, that's a very good question. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know that, like, uh, from, like, a national scale, uh, national scale, I mean, you've seen, like, the president use a lot of the language of the, of the movement itself. He's talking about, like, the 1%. He's talking about the 99%. And when, when that happens, when, like, the leader of your nation is actually... You know, co-opting the message in a way, sort of speaking. I mean, I, I think that that shows that we actually have some power to it. At a more local level, well, I mean, we had the city proclamation, which which went in support of us. I mean, we've we've had you know, I mean, right now we haven't had any type of altercations with the police as far as the camp itself, and they've actually been very respectful to us. So, I mean, in a way, the the police is, uh, the police silence has actually said quite a bit mm-hmm. in the sense they haven't been on our case for anything like that. Okay. It makes you wonder, you know, we actually have a sign posted outside of our, uh, I'm not sure exactly how legitimate it is, but <laughs> it, it purports to be a uh, part of the uh, Fraternal Order no, of Police. No, it doesn't purport to be part of the Fraternal no, Order of Police. Okay. It doesn't. It, okay, what is it, yeah, it, it just It's a sign that some occupier put up there that says, you know, these two... You know, it actually came from the occupiers. Oh, did that, you it? Know, okay, yeah. well, it, I, I retract that statement. I, I know the sign. I know just the sign you're talking about. And room, some rumors have been going around camp that the police put that sign <laughs> there, but it did know that no, it actually came from an occupier. Okay, well, okay. Fa- fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but nonetheless, I mean, we've, we've there have been statements in the press that we've we've actually been self policing, that we've been mm. doing so much. So mm. I mean, there were some very kind comments after the march. Uh, you know, one of the lieutenants, I believe, said something. You know, th- they understood the message that we were sending. Absolutely, so, yeah. and the fact that we had we weren't violent, we weren't you know carrying on. We we were respectful to what their right. job is. And I, I hope that you know we are still respectful to the citizens mm-hmm. of the city and respectful to, uh, to to the taxpayers of the city. So I mean, that, that's my hope. Mm-hmm. But as far as like change itself that we've impacted in the city, I think it's more of like you're you're going to see the change happen gradually. I mean, upsetting the status quo is not an easy task. I mean, you can't just expect to, like, have, like, a moment's notice and all of a sudden things have changed. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've only been doing two months. I mean, it sounds like a long time, almost three months now, but realistically, in the scope of things, it's not. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to see a lot of change coming forward, and I think that we're making gradual progress, but it's progress nonetheless. Mm-hmm. I have, we have about a minute and a half left. Where do you think this is going as far as, uh, you know, the camp, the next... It is a blog, so, you know, let's look at the political calendar the next year. I mean, where do you think this is going? Well, the election season for next year is going to be very interesting. Oh, okay. I, I'm wondering ex- exactly how much impact this is going to have and what Occupy's role is going to be in that process. I mean, it's not something I've really discussed with many people, but it's something that I'm definitely keeping an ear open to, and I'm, I'm anxious to see exactly what happens. Okay. Uh, in a more immediate sense, you know, uh, you know, the court case is ongoing. And so I think that a lot of it's going to hinge on, on what happens on January 10th and, the, and the, the, the weeks and months following. All right. All right. Michael, thanks a lot for talking to us. Thank you. I appreciate it.